you know, just just yesterday she had to, she had to give a speech spontaneously. Do you notice I have no teleprompters here, by the way? Do you think I'm doing okay without any teleprompters? I don't think she could do very well without teleprompters. Kamala Harris, she, you know, she says you're unburdened by what has been so that we can achieve what was. By the way, that is a communist phrase, just so we are clear. She was raised by a communist. She is a Marxist. And now all of a sudden we're supposed to believe that Kamala Harris is the new coming for this country. Let me just say this. I don't believe the polls a minute that show that she's up with all of this. These are, as the great Rush Limbaugh taught us, these are suppression polls that are published to make you upset and to break your spirit. But look at what we lived through. And now in the month of August, we're going to have to live through this show in Chicago with, yeah, that's one way to put it. And, and then how about the vice president? Bernie Sanders in the beer belly from Minnesota. I'll, I'll tell you this guy, Eric Holder was in charge of the vetting. And I think we can all say Eric Holder is a DEI pick. I mean, did he actually do his job? This guy put tampons in boys' bathrooms, post-birth abortion. He wants driver's licenses for illegals, Medicare for illegal aliens. He wants to take your guns away. He allowed Minneapolis to burn during the George Floyd riots. And they passed over Josh Shapiro because there's so much Jew hatred in the Democrat Party that they couldn't possibly have Josh Shapiro on the ticket. And so Harrison Walls, and I'm not being, I'm not exaggerating, if they were to become president and win, it would be maybe a death blow against the United States of America. Now that doesn't mean we give up if they do that. I wanna make sure we're all clear. But we, right now, here's the good news. We have time left. We have time left, and to understand the stakes of what we are up against. Why do they hate Donald Trump so much? Because they are willing to do things against Trump that they've never been able to, that they've never wanted to do before. It's not because of his tweets. It's not because of his tone. It's because he allows you, the American people, into the room. He gives you, the American people, a voice. Why do they hate Donald Trump so much? Because their shady backroom deals are starting to be exposed. They hate Donald Trump because we realize that maybe we shouldn't be spending hundreds of billions of dollars on Ukraine while our own southern border is open. They hate Donald Trump because they say, wait, wait a second. The American people are no longer buying our BS anymore. You see, Donald Trump has changed the game because Donald Trump is on a rescue mission to save Western civilization from a ruling class that has been robbing the American dream from you, your kids, and your grandkids on a daily basis. And Donald Trump does not need to be doing this. When I hear from people, oh, I don't like Trump because of his tone and all this, I say, what have you sacrificed for this country? Now, if you served, good, thank you for that. But Donald Trump has served in his own way. Unlike Tim Walls, he's actually been shot at while campaigning for president. And they tried everything they could to remove him. Think about it. They impeached him twice. They, t they try to take away his business empire. They indicted him four times to try to put him in prison. And then let me just say this as diplomatically as I can. There is something deeply wrong and suspicious of what happened when Donald Trump gets shot. That's all I'm gonna say. There's something very wrong. Do you guys agree with me that there's something that's not right there? There's something not right. By the way, don't you wish we had a Republican Party in D.C. that said we are not going to take a day off until we get answers from the Secret Service and the FBI? What is going on here? Oh yeah, he's just walking around with the rifle and a bunch of Trump supporters are saying, hey, there's a guy with a gun, there's a guy with a gun. And he's able to get up on a roof. We don't know how he got up on the roof and he has very suspicious cell phone activity. And he's able to fire off all these shots. It seems almost that some Republicans don't want to get at the answer because they're afraid of what that answer actually might leave. Anyway, but he continues to fight and he continues to persevere. And understand the stakes. Kamala Harris, she values the foreigner over the American citizen. She does not believe in the United States Constitution. Kamala Harris at her core is someone who wakes up every single day 
and believes that America is a mistake. Donald Trump wakes up every single day and believes America is a miracle worth appreciating and defending and thanking the Lord for. So what does that mean? And here's where I really want to spend the most of our time. It is tempting to believe that Donald Trump is going to do all the hard work for you. But this is where you come in. This is where we come in. I am traveling the country working harder than I ever have worked to try to win over every new voter, to register every new voter. Now you might say, you know, Illinois is lost, but hey, 13 miles north of here, if we win the state of Wisconsin, Donald Trump is gonna go back to the White House. 13 miles north of here. And so maybe, maybe you guys say, hey, we're gonna take the kids out to eat. Let's go up to Lake Geneva. We're gonna go have breakfast and we're gonna write on every single receipt, vote Trump. No tax on tips, right? Every time. Maybe you want to put even more work in and we're happy to put you to work at Turning Point Action. And you're going to go knock on doors and register new voters. We have to do our part. Now my part is that I visit college campuses so you don't have to. And I'm going to be going to the University of Wisconsin-Madison not once, not twice, but three times this fall. You're all welcome to join me. Because we might not win the entire university campus, but losing by less, finding every vote new voter. Do you know that young men are the most conservative they have been in over 50 years? Young men are tired of the hyper-feminization of American culture. They're sick of what the American culture has become, that if you are a young man that believes in the country and you do not want to eat vegan all day long, you're called a rapist just because you exist. Yeah, they call those people weird. You know who the weird ones are? Tim Walls and the Democrat Party are weird for the pornography they're putting in our kids' schools and the drag queen story hour in front of our kids in, our, in the libraries, and they call us weird. It's going to involve every single one of us. It's going to take every single one of us. Because here's what I don't want to have happen. I don't want to have happen that we think that Donald Trump's got this. And he is putting in the work. Because he does not need to be doing this. He could be golfing and enjoying his resorts. He could just be spending time. But Donald Trump is a traitor to the ruling class. He was a member of the billionaire class. He went to all their parties. He was part of the high society. Donald Trump doesn't get invited to those things anymore, but he doesn't care because he was watching his beloved country go in the wrong direction. And one day he said, I'm going to go down this golden escalator and see who supports me. And very similar to other movements in the past, he has ignited this firestorm and a movement that will live beyond him, by the way. And by the way, how great is J.D. Vance? Are we happy with how J.D. Vance is doing? Is he not doing great? I'll tell you what, J.D. Vance doing those press conferences the reporters are afraid to ask him questions, right? And this movement is very simple. It's one that says, we want to make things in America again, not import piles of junk from China. This movement says, we are not going to bring in another foreigner into this country until the American citizen is prioritized, American students are put first, our borders are closed, if you want to come in, come in legally, period. And finally, we will play to win when we fight wars. But it is not our job to go nation build every corner. It is not our job to go support dictatorships halfway around the world. And by the way, how humiliating. You saw what happened this last week. We're on the three-year anniversary of the disastrous withdrawal of Afghanistan, where you saw the Taliban with their our equipment, over $100 billion of our equipment, rubbing it right in your face. I love that sign, by the way. Trump will end the Ukraine war. Stand up. I love that. He will end the Ukraine war, and he'll spend the money in America instead. I love that. I love that. And understand... The Democrats are putting forward a radical, anti-American agenda when it comes to social policy. I am pro-life. Anyone else here pro-life? I love it. 
The Democrats are the extremists when it comes to abortion. Tim Walls signed into law, and every time this issue comes up, you need to remind your friends about this. We need to make the media cover it. You know that eight babies in Minnesota in a couple years survived abortions, were delivered, and then murdered on the operating table, legally under Tim Walls' laws? The Democrats want no restrictions on abortion whatsoever. The Democrats are okay with post-birth abortion, as Ralph Norum said. I don't know about you, but I think it's time we start to play offense on the abortion issue and no longer cower aside and say, oh, I hope this issue goes away. The Democrats are the radicals when it comes to abortion. Every life is worthy of protection because it's made in the image of God. Let me close with this. Gary's doing a great job organizing all of this. At Turning Point Action, we are deploying hundreds of full-time ballot chasers. I want every one of you to do what we call Commit 100. Commit 100 is you say, I'm going to find 100 new voters for Donald Trump from now to the election. And it could be waiters, it could be waitresses, it could be friends at a church. It's gonna require some work. It could be neighbors, it could be aunts, it could be uncles, it could be cousins. But finding those 100 new voters could make the difference, especially if they are in Wisconsin. Some of you say, but Charlie, the elections are not as secure as they should be. You're right. But do you know the one thing that we can control? The thing we can control is to prevent the greatest fraud that occurred in the 2020 election. The greatest fraud were people who agreed with us that didn't vote at all. And there are people out there. You know, there were millions of people out there that voted for, that, that supported Trump and did not vote for Trump in 2020. Oh, they don't need my vote. It's a waste of time. I believe we are the majority of this country. I believe that we are the ones silent majority in this country. And I believe that if we could find every single voter, get them out to the polls. And by the way, become a poll worker, become a poll watcher, get involved in the election integrity process. But the, the mission mantra is what Donald Trump says. We make it too big to rig. It's gonna require every voice, every patriot, every volunteer. Traveling the country, I'm so inspired by seeing people of all walks of life start to get engaged in this election. This might be the final battle. It might be the battle that all the other ones hedge upon. Do you guys feel that too? You feel that if Kamala Harris becomes president of the United States, we don't give up, but we're gonna be in a very, very tough place. So what then are we to do? We are to show the Democrat party exactly what Donald Trump told us to do in Butler, Pennsylvania, to fight, 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 fight. And that means we fight by registering new voters. We fight by showing up at every event that we can. We fight by talking to our uncle one last time and badgering them, oh, I don't vote, it's rigged. Go vote, Uncle Dan. Go vote, Uncle Rick. You're gonna go vote. You take them by the neck and you bring them to the polling place and then you take them out for breakfast afterwards. It's that type of one-on-one -on -one connection, that type of grittiness that's gonna make a difference. We are so blessed in our family. We have two kids under two. We have a two-year-old and a three-month-old. I am, I am. Why I do what I do is I want them to grow up in the country I grew up in. I know many of you agree, and it is possible. We outnumber them. What if we are living through the primal scream of a dying regime? What if we're living through a group of people that are so worried that their fraud is finally being exposed, that their thievery and their deception is finally being uncovered? This is the machine, the Democrat Party, against a movement. This is a group of oligarchs versus the citizens. This is bigger than Republican or Democrat. This is Americanism versus globalism. This is the future of liberty versus slavery, serfdom, and suffering. And here's the posture we should have. Thank you, God, that I get to live through a time like this. Thank you, God, that I get to participate, not just witness. Thank you, God, I get to do something about it. And God, use me for your purpose to save the greatest nation 
ever to exist in the history of the world. God bless you guys, and let's win in November. Thank you, everybody. Okay.